So today I'm going to be speaking a little bit about how you guys can achieve your goals. So first of all, I want to find out uh, by a raise of hands, who owns a business, a photography business? Okay. Who has a website for that business? Awesome. Okay. And lastly, one more, one more uh, question real quick. Who uses Google or one of the other search engines to find products or services? Pretty much everybody here. Okay, excellent. So that's what I'm talking about today. I'm going to explain to you a little bit, just a brief summary of what it takes to get your business in front of people who are searching for services located here in the Billings area and, and other markets as well. So what I'm going to be covering today is what is SEO, SEO defined, um, what SEO can actually do for your business, how to achieve good SEO, I'm going to get into some specifics for SEO for photographers, and lastly I'll finish up with some questions and answers um, that any of you might have. I'm just going to hit the slide for the next one. Okay, so what is SEO? Well, it stands for Search Engine Optimization. And basically what it is, it's, it's different than search engine marketing in that you achieve it naturally. You don't pay anything necessarily to get this. It's free marketing. So anytime that we can build this free, it's amazing for your business. Obviously, you can go pay Google, pay per click, you can pay Facebook. All day long, you can do those things. But what I'm talking about today is how you can achieve results naturally. Okay, going over next one. Can you hit that? Thank you so much, for it. That'll help you. Okay. So the benefits of the SEO are increased leads for your business. That's obviously what we're in business for is to increase our leads. We want to increase our bottom line. Uh, increased business reputation. I don't know if you've ever searched for a business before and you looked at all the different businesses and the results and you, 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 you tend to decide on how valuable a business is depending on how they show up in the search results. At least some people will put together that psychological analysis. Um, you also get an ease of finding your business. So you have a client out there, they might not know your full name. They might not know how to get a hold of you. Well, if you are at the top of the search results, it's very easy for them to get to your business. And the quicker they can get to your business, the quicker you can turn sales. Additionally, it increases website traffic. Now, obviously, every single person on your website might not buy from you. But the increase of your website traffic can be very valuable, especially if you have a product that you're selling postcards, you're selling prints. These types of things, people can purchase from anywhere on the web. You know, they can purchase from Asia, they can purchase it from New York. So the increase in website traffic is actually extremely valuable for you. Um, and it's also as well as valuable marketing. The great thing about it is that people are all the time searching on Google, all the time, looking for information. And your business can actually provide that information, and I'll be digging into how you can do this. But being that resource in the industry is very important, I think, to people. You know, they, they want to know, they want to see that someone has the information. When they're going to search for a photographer, or you're searching for a mechanic, or you're searching for any type of service, how much do they know about that industry? How much can they offer me a solution to it? So that's where search results are very important. Um, I feel that when a business do, does its due diligence to really put forth its best foot on the web, you know, you know that they're going to take care of you well. Next slide, please. How to achieve good SEO. The, the number one thing to achieving good SEO is having consistent business information across the board. That means your phone, your address, your email. Those are very important. Every single place that you're listed on the web, whether it be Monta or Facebook or a directory, it's very, very important to have consistent information. A mismatch of a phone number, a mismatch of an address, uh, is very, very bad for Google. Uh, Google can go as far as to actually no-index you uh, for having the wrong information. Because just like in the real world, it's all about reputation. How long have you been in business? How long have you been at the right address? How long have you had the same phone number? And those things all add to your credibility, just like in the real world. So Google will uh, punish you, essentially, if you don't have accurate information. I highly recommend one of the first things uh, to do is to go check out all your social media sites. Check out anywhere where your business might be listed and make sure it's all consistent across the board. The second most important thing to getting good search results is having unique content. And unique content means it's not published anywhere else on the web. Now granted, you can link to and share other information that other people have shared but you will not get any of the credit for that information. You want to have information that nobody else has that's unique and describes what your business is all about. What's your USP, your unique selling point? What makes you different than all the other businesses? And by having those articles, by having those little information, those micro points, it allows people to be knowledgeable about what makes you special. And just in that same regard of value, that's what Google gives you value for. So Google doesn't want you to regurgitate what everybody else is doing. They want you to be unique. And if you are unique and you're providing great value, they're going to give you great value in the search results. Number three on my list here is inbound and outbound links. Now, inbound and outbound links are very, very important. I'll explain to you a little bit about what they are. 
inbound is links coming from other sites coming to your site. So those might be from like the Shutterbug Association, uh, which is a very valuable link. Um, other resources, maybe like the Chamber of Commerce, um, you know, anything that can be related to your area. So whether it's photography or whether it's business and billings, those are things that you want to have. Now, say a link from like uh, a sports club in Florida it has no value to you as a photographer. You don't necessarily need that link. Granted, it can add a little bit of value, but the more links that are related to your site content that you have, the more powerful your website becomes. And outbound links are links from your website going to other resources. So you, maybe you have a resource page on your website where you list uh, places to find um, you know, photography equipment, places to find resources for the industry, um, great bloggers, people who blog about it. Um, all those links can be ways of showing that you have value. And when a visitor comes to your website, how long are they going to be there? What are they going to find? What are they there for? Inbound and outbound links show what your website's all about. So you don't want to have random links on there. You don't want to have just a link to eBay, a link to this, a link to that, and then getting links from all these random sites. You really want to core focus on what am I doing on my website? What am I trying to achieve? My next uh, li list here is high level of internal linking. And what I mean by internal linking is links inside your site to your own site. So when you're on your page, on your contact page, do you have a link to a page that explains how to get to your location? Do you have a link that goes to your biography? When someone goes to contact you, does it have a link down there that says, read more about this person? And does it have a link back to your biography? So anywhere on your website, you should have the ability to access other information, to go in other places, go in other directions. And Google will give you value in that way because you are helping guide your visitor through the process. You know, they're not left on one page just hanging out there. Well, what do I do next type of thing? Well, this is what you could do next. Or you could go here, or you could go here. And Google will give you a lot of value for doing that. Uh, the next one on my list here is something that you might have to get someone who's technically savvy to help you with, but you can also go search um, what it is, no code errors. Ideally, you have no code errors. And you can check on your website using uh, the, the Worldwide Consortium has a free tool that you can use, which is w3c.validator.org. You go in there and you put your, your website URL in there, and it will list and show all the errors, the code errors that you have. And what you want to do, essentially, is go through and fix any of those errors. They might be broken links. They might be the wrong type of code. They might be um, CSS errors, which is the style sheet. You, know, you might have things in the wrong area, things that are old, depreciated code. You want to try and clean all that up, because every single bit of code that's wrong actually is negatively associated to you. So it, it might make your page load slower. Um, it might cause people to dead end to a 404 page error. And every single one of those things is negative towards you, towards your reputation. And Google will, will punish you for those. For example, say you had done all these other things, and there's someone else who's competing with you, and you're just trying to beat them in search results, but you just can't figure out why you can't beat them, get up over them. Well, you might have 20 errors on your website, and they have none. And that might be the only different factor, and you might not have thought about that. Um, and my last uh, part on here, which is really starting to get into the photography aspect of, of SEO, is making sure that every single image that you have on your website has the proper tags on it. And what I mean by tags is the alternate tag and the title tag. And these are optional. So you can load a photo without having any of these tags on them. Uh, it's quicker, it's easier, and you might think you're doing a great job of, of adding your photos. But the, uh, the thing I would recommend is don't even put a photo up unless you're going to do all the work to do it right. Um, you're just wasting your time. Because without an alternate tag, your image will not load as quickly and it also, if the person doesn't have the proper ability to get the image to load on there, it will not show at all. And that's what an alternate tag does, is when the photo can't load, say like they have a poor connection or something like that, the photo doesn't load, it will alternately tell you what the photo is. And that's important to Google. Like Google wants you to think of every single possible scenario and have a solution for it. There should be no, pro there should be no you know, end result where the person gets something where they don't know what it is. So, you're trying to solve all those problems ahead of time before someone gets to that point. And I will dig a little bit deeper into those on the next slide, if I can get there. Thank you, Warren. OK, actually, it'll be a couple slides down. But this slide right here, I want to talk about unique market strategies. This is where I'm actually digging into the depth of what I've done here locally, actually, for Serena's website. This is Serena's footer. And uh, we originally, before we got into this footer, we had a little footer on her site, which was probably about this big. And it had a few little information about copyrights and all the general stuff. You know, you've seen this on the websites. What we did here was we added the rest of all this right here, and specifically this part right here is what we really dialed in. 
And as you can see, it says Abzorki, Montana Photography, Bakken, North Dakota Photography, Billings, Montana Photography, blah, 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 all the way around this area. And we've created separate pages, landing pages, for each one of these links. And these links are on every single page of her website. So her website is like 60 pages. There's 60 of all those links throughout her website. So you can think about the depth of that. That tells Google that she covers these areas really well. So if I can get to the next slide, two weeks later after we built this, I'll show you the results. So when you, go, when you Google photography in Mol Mol Montana, you see right here, this is a realtor, so it's not even a photographer. This right here was paid. This is pay-per-click. This person's paying for that. This right here is free. We didn't pay anything for that. All we did was build that footer. And there, she was not in these search results prior to this. Um, two weeks later, she has the number one spot. She's going to get all the traffic just from taking that one little step that we did on her footer. And obviously, this is a small market. You know, you were not, if we were to pull up, if we were to go photography of Billings, Montana, Serena's there, but she's definitely not dominating. We're working towards that goal. There's way more competition in that market. So on that slide where I, uh, I have unique market strategies, this is a unique market strategy. We're dominating in a market that nobody else has. So what I want you guys to think about is ways to dominate markets that maybe other people hadn't thought of. Now that might come down to the type of brand products that you use. Now, you might have to have a pretty savvy consumer to search by brand name, but granted, maybe nobody else has thought of that, doing that. So that's what I really want you to do is think outside the box when it comes to SEO, you need to think of what other people aren't doing and do that in order to achieve good results. You know, no one else had, has Montana photography, obviously, um, related. You can see the next one down. doesn't even say anything necessarily about uh, well, it has a little bit about Molt Montana, but we really dialed it in here with Molt Montana Photography. And Serena Army Photography offers photography services like wedding photography, senior photography, and engagement photography in Molt Montana. And you can see this part's highlighted because it keep, ties back into the search terms that we searched. So just with that one basic example, you can do the same thing with multiple different options. Um, you know, getting, getting pictures taken at Riverfront Park, for example. I doubt any other photographers here in Billings have a page specified to that search result. Now granted, I don't know how many people actually are going to search that, but if you can imagine, say that someone wanted to have a wedding and they want it done at Riverfront Park, and just for the heck of it, they decide to search that. Well, there you are. You dominated that search. And did you do anything other than just create a page for that? No, you didn't pay anything. You didn't do anything else. You put a little bit of time and effort into figuring that out. And if you do enough of those, you're going to be the dominating source you know, in this area, and you will eventually start to overtake the more popular searches, which is like Billings Photographers, all those ones that are really dominated. I mean, they're so heavy with multiple different photographers in that area. Next slide, please. So now I'm going to dial a little bit deeper into what SEO for photographers might be about. Um, but what I did for Serena was to define service areas. So think about where, where you're willing to cover. Are you willing to go to Bozeman? Do you go to Red Lodge a lot? Do you take pictures in Yellowstone Park? Um, what specifies your service areas and how can you represent that on your website properly in order to gain those search results. Properly tag your photos with your name and a good description. So this is an addition to the alt tags and the title tags. The, the area that you really want to focus on is making sure that people know who took that photo. So when you go into Google Images and you're pulling up images of say Riverfront Park, of a duck at Riverfront Park, you want to see that Jim Larson took that photo. And you say, wow, that's a great photo. I want Jim to take the rest of my photos. So the, the name association, I believe, is important. It's not necessary, but I believe that's really good marketing. A description is really important. You know, uh, a mallard duck looking down at Riverfront Park on a cold December day. You know, like the, the specifications are very important because it lets Google know exactly what the photo is about. Google doesn't necessarily have the technology to see what your photo is about, so you have to tell them. Um, my next little... Uh, recommendation here for you is to blog about what makes you unique. Now, I talked about that a little bit already, but I think blogging is so crucial to what you're doing. You don't necessarily have to go very in-depth. You don't have to write a multiple page report. You can get on there and you can write just a couple sentences um, about what you, know, what you like to shoot. Um, you're, you're shooting a sunset and you talk about the colors, you talk about the way the ISO, you talk about the exposure. Just some real quick key points and you post it and you try to get up as many as you can. Um, one little, uh, I know you had mentioned doing uh, every day for a year, there's some type of a, of a process that you guys were working on to get better, to sharpen yourself up. I would recommend, now this takes a lot of discipline, but if you could do a blog post for a year, 365 blog posts, 
you will dominate the search results. It's almost a guaranteed formula. Um, that takes a lot of discipline and a lot of writing, but it's a guaranteed way of success. My next uh, bullet point here is submit comments and articles to industry leaders. And I've been doing this with Serena uh, a couple, we've been on a couple, uh, we're working, we're gonna be doing some more. But um, what I do there is basically we go and you know you Google like top photography blogs, for example. And you go on those photography blogs and you find a post that interests you, that's intriguing. And you read the whole post, first of all. Don't just go on there and submit a comment without reading it. But you read it and then you intelligently try to think of a response that ties in to what the person is talking about. And without you know spamming it by dropping links and that type of thing. But you could obviously you can drop your business name, you can drop resources, you can drop information about what you do. And that is a that's a boost to your name profile. So when people search for your name specifically, every link on these high ranking blogs all link into the one spot so you can manage them all from the one place and it'll spit out a score for you. And it, it walks you through the process. So it says, do you have a Facebook? Do you have a Twitter? Do you have an Instagram? Do you have all these different things? And they, as they connect through, it gives you a higher and higher score and it shows your activity of your posting on those different sites. Um, once again, it's very important to have consistent information across the social media and to be somewhat active. The more active you are in social media, the more value you get out of it. Um, if you haven't checked out Pinterest, I recommend Pinterest. Uh, it's actually pretty impressive what you can do with it. And uh, starting boards, there's, there's already a bunch of photography boards out there. You can go in, you can create your new boards, you can go find photographers that you like, add them to your board. You can add your photos to your own board and you can have people come in and pin them through. So it's actually a great resource for getting people to, to discover your artwork. Also, if you have products like prints or postcards, they can actually become um, it, Pinterest is like a product loving site as well. People will find things that they love that they want to put in their house. For example, you know, if someone's decorating a home or someone has a housewarming party and they say, well, I, I want to find some great art for my house. Well, they're going to maybe come up, stumble across your page and say, wow, that's a great photograph. I'd love to put that up in my living room. I'm going to go ahead and pin that to my board. So when it comes time to design my living room, I know where to get that. Next bullet point is link to photography resources and try to get links back. So this is kind of under the same thing with the blogging. It's important to link to specific sites that are, that are similar to what your value system is. So if you're all about photography in the Montana area or wildlife photography, for example, you want to try and find other high profile people in the industry that you can link to. Show a whole page of resource links to those types of people, as well as try to contact them and see if you can get some links back to your site. Next slide, please. OK. Uh, any questions or answers? Or, any questions that you guys have that I might be able to answer, that's how I want to say that. Anyone have any questions at this time? If not, I was going to go back to that footer and show them a little bit more how we're adding in some of the blog post titles. Okay. In the, if you wanted to go back to that for so a second. I think it's like three slides. Yeah. Right on the left-hand side, straight from the Serene Iron blog. And you can see the fourth one down, oh. we add in cross country, track meet, Billings, Montana, the third, the second to the bottom and the last one, Billings, Montana, Billings, Montana. Justin Skyview High School, High Senior, senior Billings, Montana, yeah. Benefit Concert Photography in Billings, Montana. Uh -huh. um, really hitting those keywords heavily. Hitting them, yeah. having, hitting them really heavy and they're on the home page so it's the first thing that Google sees and reads. And then at the end of each of my blog posts, I'll put Street Irene, love, you know, thank you for reading, XOXO. Uh, photographer in Billings, Montana, senior photographer in Billings, Montana. I'll do a little write-up, a little ad, um, whatever I'm writing about, wedding photographer, to get Google to recognize those are the things that I do. It's extremely powerful. Then I was going to tell you to point out the certification. This is the, this is the Worldwide Consortium, which is like a nonprofit group that oversees the whole web, like web standards. And they will, if you go and check your code and make sure there's no errors, they will give you this badge right here that you can display on the bottom of your website as checked, as uh, there's no errors. And I highly recommend going through that process and adding the badge if you, if you, let, if you care to, um, because it, it does show that every, all your visitors that you do care about making sure that there are no dead ends, there are no bro broken links, none of that issues that they're going to stumble across randomly. Okay, um, and that was at um, w3c.validator.org? Validator. Yep. Org. org. Correct. Yep. And you just put in your, your web domain there, and it will tell you how many errors and how many warnings you have. Now, and then call him if you <laughs> yeah, have to get yeah, out I was going to say, like, you know, once you get to that point, you're kind of <laughs> stuck unless you know how to dig into the code and fix the actual errors. But it's a good starting point because if you see that there's, you know, there's 80 errors, you maybe want to start dialing down, maybe try to fix some. If you see there's only like you know, 15 or something like that, 
maybe not as big of a concern. So it gives you a good starting point and what to work towards. Uh, if you're running a different site, let's say um, Smug Mug or one of those where they control everything on the site, mm -hmm. as far as I know, you can't put links in or out or because they cover it all for you. Yeah, if you have like a if you have one of those templated websites that are like an all-in-one type of thing, you're they're gonna do all the hard work for you as far as making sure the code is legitimate and there's no errors. As long as you're not putting in pasting in your own code, and you're just yeah. uploading images, you're just writing in text, that type of thing. All this is really not of concern for you. Serena has a custom built website, so like all this is custom code right here. So if there was an error in any of this, we wouldn't be able to earn this badge. Right. But with, with Smug Mug, you know, they've done the due diligence to make sure they have the best code. There's no errors in it. Um, you know, it's a lot of that. But granted, on that same note, you also have something that's like everybody else. So yeah. you, you know, the uniqueness isn't quite there. You get a lot of the, the high utility of getting a great software product, but you also you know, lose a little bit of the uniqueness as well. So I, I kind of recommend a good balance of both. And they, as far as I know, because there's like five different companies I can think of offhand, but you can't put the likes inbound and outbounds with those, can you? They don't let you link out of it? I don't think so. That's something to check on. Typically, uh, they probably won't let you do that um, because they're trying to control you know, what, what the site is about and how, what, what the, cut, the quality of the links on it. But that's not necessarily always the case. Some of them, like Photocratty, um, will let you customize how you want to. The Smug Mug might be different, but... Um, I know they'll let you link in to there real easy, but I'm not... I'm as far as the, creating out. outbound links. Right. Yeah. Warren, now, are you using a template from Smug Mug, or isn't Smug Mug, Smug Mug in, uh, shopping cart in, integration to... It's all built into one. So your website's built in under Smug Mug. Does it allow you to... It allows you to have your own um, information as far as, you know, you write about yourself. You can write, yeah. you know, I am Warren Dagman, I yeah, live in Billings, Montana, I'm a photographer. And, and there's even code you can put in okay, if well you know how to do it. Right, and that's that's where you would, that's exactly where you would put you the links in, it. in the code area. Mm -hmm. So usually they'll have a Wiz WYSIWYG, which is a what you see is what you get editor, which is similar to, like, Word documents. So everything's very easy to use. Mm -hmm. It has, like, a size and, like, a, all those things. And typically it'll have a little link button up there, so if you just highlight so you want to put like uh, you know the Shutterbug Association as a link on there, for example. You would write Shutterbug Association, Billings, Montana, possibly if you want to add the Billings. And then you would highlight the whole thing in blue with your cursor. And you click on the link, and then you would paste the link to that inside the box that pulls up. Click OK, and then it'll be a link. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a relatively easy process with the What You See Is What You Get editor, which I'm, I'm guessing is what they have on there. Um, when you get into the actual code side of it, it's a whole other matter, which you have to actually know the code and how to put it together. But uh, I know they have some stuff in code, and it's okay. playing with it. It's not, <laughs> <laughs> it does not hit except. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it can get a little intimidating. Yeah, and, and uh, I highly recommend if you don't know what you're doing with the code, to just stay out of it because you know just one little misstep in there. You, you think you you think you might have had it. You know, if you don't know, if you don't visualize way, the way code is put together and you're trying to add something and you might have accidentally went over something, you didn't realize it and you save, you know, that's gone. It's just, it's just gone. So, like, unless you roll back your whole website. So, it can be really risky to deal with code if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but the what you see is what you get editor should really allow you to add links without having to really deal with code. Okay, thank you. No problem. I'm willing to post uh, a link to this slideshow on our website so that we can think of Intelligent questions to ask computers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This uh, this slide was this slideshow was created for you guys. So, absolutely. Yeah. Does anyone else? Basis for the recent lawsuit that Google confronted regarding skewed search results. How do you feel about that? How I feel about that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, as far as the skewed search results, um, you know. It's, I don't know a whole lot about that particular case, um, but I know that um, they were, they were not necessarily, they were gaming the, the results depending on um, some paid aspects, and it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be completely organic, um, and somehow they were tweaking with the actual search results that, um, you know, the pay-per-click and the organic are supposed to be separate. There's not supposed to be any crossover. You're not supposed to be able to buy your way into the organic aspect of it, and I'm, I'm, I think that's where the main issue was, but I have to dig a little deeper into that specific case you're talking about. Well, I'm a free enterprise guy. I, 
I think if you don't like what you got on Google, then go to some other search engine. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's <laughs> true. It's to me yeah. that they got sued. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Right. Right. You don't like it. Goes, it goes absolutely, I agree. It's a free service. Right. So absolutely. And of course, yeah. SEO is for any any search engine. Yahoo, Bing, any of them. Yeah. They all have the same spiders that are ranking. Maybe different qualifications, but same. Actually, um, most of the, except for Bing, all the other web searches uses Google's uh, engine, essentially. So they're all pretty much the same, except for Bing, which Bing has a unique, uh, it has a unique engine as well as it has proprietary connections to Facebook and Twitter that Google doesn't have. So Bing's actually partnered with them. They get the information immediately rather than secondarily, which Google gets secondarily. So Bing is actually an up-and-coming search engine. Um, I recommend checking Google and Bing to see where your business ranks. Um, I don't know if you guys have done it, but you know, Google search your name, Google search your business, see what shows up. You know, what, what, what's out there? You'd be surprised. People will list your business or list your name on just random websites and different things. Um, there's several different like Monta will list your business where you didn't even know about it, but there's information about out, you, out there about you. And sometimes that information is wrong. They got the wrong number, they got the wrong, and that's actually penalizing you when you didn't even have anything to do with it. Um, so I think that's really important to clean up your, though your citations and the way you look online. Any other questions? Answer? Well, thank you guys so much for your time today. I've got some business questions.